Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, October 26. News from the state of Arkansas. Friday night, 2020, ABC's news program devoted a full hour to the case of Representative Justin Harris, whose family took in three children and, and not very long after gave them away because they said they were too difficult to deal with. This is a story that the Arkansas Times broke and reported in great detail. It, it resulted in a state law that makes the so-called rehoming or giving away of children after you've adopted them a felony crime in Arkansas. He's had very little consequences for his action. Uh, the news program had some interesting interviews with people who were critical of this case, including an on-camera interview with a caseworker who opposed this adoption. The show came up to the point of, but did not discuss, the complicity of the State Department of Human Services and bad decisions over the advice of people that this family was not qualified to handle these children in the first place. I'd refer you to the Arkansas Times website, to Benji Hardy's great report on what was missing from the 2020 story. It had some good things in it, but there was a particularly significant point about the state legislature's uh, influence of his power over state agency that was overlooked. We've covered it in great detail. Lots more news about the 30 crossing project downtown, uh, the plan to expand Interstate 30 to 10 lanes through the middle of, of Little Rock. We think it will have incredibly damaging impact on, on the city. Uh, an alliance of architects and construction people have said the same thing. The mayor of Little Rock, Mayor Stoll, has raised some objections. Over the weekend, the director of the highway department, I think, revealed his hand a little bit that his mind is pretty well made up. He really wants to move traffic through this city faster and move people from suburbs to and back from Little Rock faster. He happens to live in Bryant himself. These will have damaging impact for the city of Little Rock. I think there's some efforts underway now to look to see if there's a legal action that's possible to stop this project, at least in the form in which it's being considered is too much, too far, and too bad for the city of Little Rock. Beginning today, Hillary Clinton's 68th birthday, a super PAC, which is supporting her candidacy, is going to begin rolling out videos of interviews with people who've known her at different stages of her life. Among the first videos were some done by friends and admirers in Arkansas. You'll see them on the airways. It's an effort to soften the image of the Democratic presidential candidate. We learned today from the Searcy Daily Citizen that the uh, former ball knob police chief now figures in an investigation of, the, of an arson of his pickup truck when he was the police chief. Somebody spray painted Second Amendment on it. This was after he'd arrested somebody on an open carry charge. Been a lot of speculation what that might have been about. He, went, he quit that job saying he feared for his family, went to work for the BB Police Department, was fired shortly thereafter. The investigation of this case anew by the state agency and perhaps federal agencies might suggest that at least some suspicion is being pointed in his direction. We'll find out more of that in the days ahead. Carla Tyson, daughter of John Tyson, who'd been the CEO, Don Tyson, excuse me, who'd been the CEO of Tyson Foods, heir to an immense fortune, was arrested in Fayetteville Saturday night for drawing a shotgun on a couple of people who pulled up and parked in front of her house. She said she was afraid nobody was hurt. Police were called. She was booked in jail and held there for 10 hours until she bailed herself out. She was charged with terrorist and threatening and assault. Some news from other states are, have some interest here, I think. One was Louisiana, where they elect state board of education members. Those elections were Saturday in Louisiana. It was almost a clean sweep for the reform slate of candidates, so-called reform slate, I should say. They were powered by money from billionaires around the country who believe in charter schools, Common Core, and other so-called education reform agendas. The Waltons, Jim and Alice Walton, put almost a million dollars into PACs that were influential in those races in Louisiana. And from Mississippi, amazing news to me, the uh, chancellor of the Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, has ordered the state flag off the Ole Miss campus, which was the desire of the Student Government Association. That flag carries the, the emblem of the Confederate battle flag. He had asked the legislature to consider changing the state flag. They would, and now the state's namesake university no longer waves the state flag. I expect we haven't heard the last of that. A lot of talk on social media, and you can find the image on our website at a link at the Arkansas blog. A robbery of a yellow cab driver in Conway over the weekend, sort of a garden variety robbery and nobody was hurt, I'm happy to say, but a, a camera in the cab caught the full ride and the full robbery from beginning to end. It's striking video, very scary episode for the driver. Today's Huck Up, Mike Huckabee, the failing presidential candidate, says he's the only Republican in the race that is going to protect Social Security and Medicare recipients 
from having to retire at a later age or pay more money or whatever. Guess what? Three years he wrote a book, BuzzFeed tells us, it says we're going to have to make some dramatic changes in Social Security and Medicare. We just can't continue things the way they are. Changes are going to have to happen. That was in. He's in a race now. He's not doing too much. And we know older people are a big part of the Republican primary vote, but he doesn't seem to be catching on like Ben Carson, Donald Trump, and a few others are. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow. You feel it in your heart. The spirit of Little Rock. We've had that spirit since 1927. Helping build our city by producing decades of leaders in the heart of our state. We are the heart of business and innovation. The heart of politics and government. The heart of arts and culture. And in our city beats the heart of a Trojan. UALR. We are Little Rock's team and Little Rock's university.